Hi, this is Steve here from Big Mess of Wires, and I'm doing a mini review of the Rigol 1074Z oscilloscope. Now, I'm not an expert in oscilloscopes, and my last one was so ancient that I'd probably be amazed by just about any modern scope. So keep that in mind when you listen to my impressions. Really, the, there's a big gap between the scopes in the $300 price range and scopes in the $800 plus dollar price range. And so this 1074Z is one of the only scopes right now that is actually in that hole. Uh, the list price is $585 right now. Uh, I actually paid a bit less than that. This scope actually has four channels, which is one of the main reasons that I chose it because it can double as a basic logic analyzer in a pinch when you need to look at several channels at once. A couple of the nicest things about this model beyond the four channels, uh, it's got a nice big bright screen and it's got a really large sample memory, uh, 12 million points standard sample memory and that can uh, be increased to 24 million points. There's also a software hack that you can get for this which will supposedly unlock the um, oscilloscope bandwidth and let you take it from 70 megahertz up to 200 megahertz as well as unlock some of the other um, decoding features and other advanced features on the scope. I haven't tried that but reportedly it's pretty easy to do and it does work. So first impressions here from the outside. The scope looks good. It looks like a professional instrument. Uh, it's pretty heavy. It's not going to slide around on your desk. The knobs have a good feel to them. They feel solid. Uh, the buttons feel good. The, the quality of the plastics and, and um, everything on here all, all looks good. So no complaints there. You know, it definitely looks like a, uh, a real instrument you wouldn't be embarrassed to have in your lab. The scope comes with four of these 100 megahertz probes. I've only got two of them hooked up right now, but uh, it does include four, so uh, there's nothing more to buy as far as that's concerned. When you turn it on, there's a little more fan noise than I was hoping to have. Um, it's not terrible, but I'm kind of a nut about having a quiet workspace. And, um, you know, I'd say this scope is as probably as loud as a sort of high-end gaming PC with a lot of fans and stuff blowing in there. It's not horrible, but it's certainly not silent. You can see it takes maybe 10 or 15 seconds to boot up and uh, be ready to start working. The screen looks good. It's nice and bright. It's easy to read. The layout of the buttons I find to be pretty intuitive as well. On the left-hand side, this is always devoted to measurement functions. And um, the right hand side, these soft buttons um, depend upon the context of what other um, operation you're doing. In terms of the overall responsiveness of the controls, everything feels good. You know, the, the display changes quickly in response to turning knobs and things. It's not laggy. It's not going to have you kind of like grumbling under your teeth about, um, you know, why stuff is so slow. There's a lot of measurement functions here, and this is one of the things that I really appreciate about this scope. So for each channel, you've got 12 different measurements that the scope can do vertically and another 12 that it can do horizontally. Um, so let's take a look at uh, channel one and we're looking at horizontal measurements so we can have it measure our signal period, frequency, rise time, fall time, high width, low width, duty cycle, yada yada, all kinds of great stuff. Pretty cool. And then uh, if I hit this menu button, uh, for me, these were even more helpful, the, the vertical measurements. So I can get the minimum and maximum voltage, the peak-to-peak -peak voltage, amplitude, um, average voltage, uh, RMS, overshoot, stuff like that. Actually, just the other day, I was debugging a problem where there was a lot of noise, uh, some oscillation in um, the power supply of a project I was working on. And I was able to come over and just hit this peak-to-peak um, -peak voltage measurement and um, measure exactly how much oscillation I was getting in my supply line and then see how that changed as I tweaked the circuit. So that was, uh, that was great. Down here in the corner in very tiny text, it says uh, my peak-to-peak -peak voltage right now is 3.04 volts. You can have, I think, up to six or 
eight measurements going at the same time here from multiple channels. So that is uh, pretty handy. Yeah, so, and, and from horizontal and vertical and multiple channels all at the same time. If you had all four channels going at the same time, I think the screen real estate would start to get uh, a little crowded. Um, we'd probably need to um, start squeezing some things down uh, to try to get it to all fit. But, um, you know, it's nice that the, the feature is there at least. In terms of triggering, um, you know, frankly, there's probably more options than I even know what to do with. Um, you know, you've got your standard edge triggering, rising and falling edge, but it's also got things like pulse, slope triggering, video triggering, um, duration triggering, runt pulse triggers, and you can also set up triggers on um, serial or I2C or SPI events, which is pretty cool. See, we can adjust the trigger level with uh, its own knob. We can do one-shot triggers. Uh, with the push of a single button uh, it's pretty standard but handy you can force triggering so uh, you know I'm definitely happy in terms of the degree of triggering options here let's just peek through some of the other menus real quickly it's got a pass fail function which maybe I'll use someday to uh, check for a waveform that's out of um, outside the bounds of what was expected yeah, there's quite a bit of um, customization just in terms of the display settings, um, the grid, um, whether you want vector or dots, stuff like that. But you can take a screenshot and um, save it to a connected uh, USB memory stick. There's also, a, you can connect the thing to your computer via USB cable. Uh, I haven't tried that. One of the things I really like about this scope is the deep memory feature. I was pretty skeptical about deep memory before I bought this. I couldn't think what I was going to do with millions of points of sample memory. But it turns out it is super helpful for when you don't actually know ahead of time exactly what you're looking for in your signal. So right now I've got this set to uh, 200 microseconds per division. So it's going to be a pretty long capture. And I'm going to go ahead and reset my target board I've got connected here. And... I've got a ton of SPI data. In this case, uh, it's my microcontroller sending some data to an LCD. And it's all just kind of a blur, but you can kind of see at the high level here, there was a whole bunch of stuff that, that looked pretty regular, and then somewhere right about here, I started doing something, something different. The waveform looks different. Let's actually zoom in on that region and kind of check out what's going on. So uh, I'll center that and then I start to zoom in. Uh, so on top in yellow is um, my SPI clock and down below in blue is uh, is the data. So one thing I noticed right off is that there's a ton of undershoot and overshoot on my signals here and that's not good. Let me zoom back out again. So here it looks like there's a, there's a whole bunch of regions where um, we're just sending zero bytes to the LCD. I think this is where we're actually clearing the screen. It had to send uh, a ton of zeros to the screen. Uh, so let's zoom out again a little. Okay, so here's the beginning of that interesting region where now, now we're sending some different data. Okay, so this must be the beginning of the command sequences to actually write some data to the screen. Now one of the nicest features about this scope is that it will actually do decoding of SPI, I2C, or serial data for you and show that decoded info on screen. Uh, it's in the math menu and uh, I think we need decode one. Yeah, we'll change this to SPI and um, turn it on and yeah, look at that. Uh, so and my data decodes a 7F7F. Um, it correctly caught that uh, channel 1 was clock and channel 2 was data. Uh, if I zoom out a little bit more, um, let's see. Let's see some, try to find some data that's not 7F. Here we go. 80, 40. Uh, yeah, I happen to know um, that 80-40 combination sets the uh, cursor position of the LCD to the top left corner. Right now I'm doing decode uh, and looking at the data in hex, um, but if I was sending ASCII data, there's also uh, an ASCII options. Okay, overall impressions, I really like the scope. 
Uh, I'm glad that I bought it. I'm glad that I got a scope with the deep memory. It's really nice. It's intuitive to use. It just lets me get on with doing my work and everything just behaves the way it seems like it should uh, without having to spend a lot of time fussing with menus and things. And in the end, that's what's really important. So if you have any other questions or there's anything else you'd like me to test on this scope, let me know. Uh, leave me a note in the comments and thanks for watching.